Hey, what's up, y'all? So look, today I'm reviewing an electric bike from the Electric Bike Company. It's a very convenient name, but uh, this is their Model E version and it starts at $16.99. So in this review, I'm gonna talk about the specs, the features, the design, and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Let's kick things off and talk about the design of this bike. So one good thing about this is that this company sends their bikes fully assembled. Well, pretty much fully assembled. Um, so as far as delivery, I had an actual delivery company contact me to set up the uh, time for them to drop this thing off and it came on a pallet. Um, the box was in pristine condition and when I took it out of the box it was pretty much ready to go so I did have to spend a few minutes getting all the the plastic and the protective wrapping and stuff off of it but after that I just needed to put on the handlebars by just lining up the front tire um, putting the handlebars in screwing it down and I was ready to go after I gave the battery a charge so this was the easiest assembly that I've ever had from any electric bike so that is a good thing if you're concerned about that and just generally with the whole design of this bike they did a really good job in making sure all the wires are buttoned up um, they're wrapped down and tightened up where they need to be and a lot of the uh, wires are actually routed through the frame of the bike especially the brake lines and so you don't see a lot of wires just hanging off so this is a very nice clean design just the overall look of this bike it doesn't stand out too much which is a good thing with an electric bike especially if you plan on leaving this you know locked up somewhere so overall i like the look it's a little bit of a classic look this is a step through design so it's going to be a lot easier to get on and off of this bike versus one that has like the, the tube at the top so um, this is going to be good for people who might have back issues or you might might be short uh, this is going to be a really good bike for you and you have three stock colors to choose from so you have red white and also the black as you see here but on the company's website one good thing is that you do have customization options so if you do want a different color from the vast uh, amount of colors that they have to choose from you can change it to that but it will be an, an additional cost but you can choose a particular color for the frame of the bike and also a particular color for the fork of the bike too to kind of really mix and match it up and there's some other things you can customize like adding on a basket and um, changing up different things and I'm going to talk about a little bit later on but I like the fact that you do have some customization options with this bike. Now I usually wait to talk about my favorite things about a particular product until later on in the video but I'm about to talk about those two things right now. The first thing is going to be the handlebar which it gives this bike its cruiser type of style right like a beach cruiser. So the handlebars are in this U shape right here and they're really spread out and this basically allows you to have your hands a little bit wider than you would on a traditional handlebar where it's going to be more straight in front of you. So this is just very convenient for me and also it allows me to have really good control over the bike and I also like the fact that you have a lot of space on this handlebar to be able to add different attachments and so you have a lot of space to add a phone mount or a water bottle holder or for me I like to add like GoPros and stuff to the the handlebars of my bike when I'm doing these type of reviews um, and I have a lot of space on here so I don't feel too cramped so that is really nice but then the second thing is going to be this big seat right here and I had someone call this like my grandma's seat when they saw me riding this but I don't care for me I hate the little small tiny seats that you get with a lot of electric bikes and because look I'm about six feet tall and I weigh about 225 pounds and my butt is a little big all right I'm just being honest with you and so I usually buy a third-party seat of this type of design and I put it on my electric bike but I like the fact that this is the stock seat that you get and it's super comfortable super soft and this bike does not have any type of suspension system so when that's the case you want to make sure your seat is as comfortable as can be and this one is the case and so the truth is is that I've been on some bikes that have some really good suspension systems but their seat sucks so it definitely Definitely kind of just like takes away from that experience but if you don't have a suspension system you better make sure you, that you do have a comfortable seat um, and this bike does have that and this seat is adjustable here so it has a quick clamp right here that you can just unclip and you can take the seat all the way off I didn't mean to do that but <laughs> yeah you can take it up um, and raise it up or you can raise it down to get that sweet spot and then just clamp it down and you're good to go and you will also find 26 inch tires on this bike and I like the fact that they're not super thin they're not super thick they're right there in the middle usually your bigger tires are going to be made for like off-roading and your thinner tires are going to be made for riding on streets and roads and stuff um, but this is right there in the middle where if you do need to go off on gravel and stuff like I'm at um, right now it's going to be fine but when you get on the paved roads and stuff you still have a, a decent amount of size with the tires to make it feel like a comfortable ride um, and also the traction is pretty good with the uh, treading on this and then also um, these uh, tires are going to be puncture proof as well so they should be a little bit durable. All right, so let's talk about the controls. So on the handlebars, you will find a pretty big color LCD display that is bright, um, especially for this time of the day where the sun is beaming down on me. Um, I can see this display really easily. And also too, uh, you will find some controls here on the left-hand side of the handlebars to be able to go between the different uh, pedal assist modes. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And um, then also too, you can power on the bike from this
this uh, left hand controller and then also you will be able to turn on the headlights and the tail lights just by holding on the up button on this now one thing i would change about the headlight tail light system is that you can't have the tail light on without having the headlights on you have to have both on at the same time and also the tail light does not react to when you do press down on the brakes so when you do have the tail light on it's just one solid brightness but i wish it did kind of dim down a little bit and when you press on the brakes it would brighten up and i think that's better for when you are riding on bike paths or especially when you are in the road to let people know behind you what you're doing and then on the right hand side of the handlebars you will find the thumb throttle so speaking of throttle let's talk about the speed and performance that you get with this bike when you are riding it all right so now i'm gonna do a speed test so let me turn the bike on and one thing i don't like is that you have to turn on the pedal assist every time by default it is off when you turn on the bike so um, you just have to press down on the uh, down button and that will activate that so my first speed test is will be with the uh, pedal assist at level five and let's go all right i'm gonna put a little bit of effort into it you can see it's a pretty foggy day out here in st louis today um, but right now we're at 20 miles per hour 22 23 23.9 i got a little barrier up here so i'm gonna slow down just a little bit to get past this and now i'm gonna put it into full gear with my pedaling now we have 24.9 and we hit 25 miles per hour and that's going to be like the top speed for me using pedal assist and test out the braking not bad all right so this next test will just be using the thumb throttle by itself so let me turn pedal assist off boom it is off and let's go just using the throttle and so i will say that the uh start from just like a dead stop on this bike using the throttle um it's not slow it's not fast it's kind of right there in between um, but right now you can see we're already at 20 miles per hour which is going to be the maximum of what i've been able to get while using just the throttle so um, i think that's because they are limiting the power that this uh, thousand watt motor is putting out to keep you at this 20 mile per hour uh, limit right here and now i'm just going to do another brake test i'm gonna slam down on the brakes all right so that was a little bit more aggressive than my previous braking test but yeah the brakes on this bike are good all right so this first hill test will just be using the throttle only so let's go and let's see how we are we're we're right now at about nine miles per hour we're at 10 going up this incline so yeah it's not like a super uh, like steep incline like just going straight up but it is a little bit of a of a climb here so now we're at 13 miles per hour hovering right there below 14 and we're getting up here pretty smoothly i've used some other bikes that uh, haven't been able to take this test as easily as this one is so yeah we're now we're at like 14 miles per hour can we hit 15 no we're not gonna hit 15 but we're at the top of the hill not bad not bad at all all right now let's go back down i'm not gonna take these stairs <laughs> and now let me turn on the pedal assist boom there we go and we're at level five here and it took a second just to kick in but now we are rolling so i'm putting like medium effort in right now and we're at 15 miles per hour 16 right about 17 i'm not working hard at all 18 miles per hour eating this thing like butter so yeah, I think this motor is definitely powerful enough to take on most hills that people will come across. And one thing I just noticed too is that when you are just using the throttle, um, you can use the up and down buttons that you would use to adjust the pedal assist um, to adjust the level of the speed for the throttle. So level one, you see I'm just going 12 miles per hour, but when I go up to level two, I can go up to around uh, 14 miles per hour. Level three, it's gonna get me like 17 miles per hour. Level four should get me around 18, 19. And then level five will get me right at 20. So yeah, that's convenient for people who don't want to, um, you know, let someone get on the bike and maybe they just want to use the throttle, but they want to keep it slower than normal. That's a good way to do that. 
And so on their website, they say that this bike does have a range of up to 50 miles. But as I always say, that is depending on how much you weigh, um, what type of terrain you're riding on, if you're going up hills, if you have the wind against you, all those different things. But um, if you do want to maximize the range, um, the good thing is that the pedal assist on this bike is really solid and you want to use that pedal assist to make sure you can go further. The battery on this bike that's going to be powering everything is a 48 volt battery that is removable. So you can take it out and then take it inside your house if you want to charge it up that way and leave the bike outside or in your garage. Um, then also this battery does have a quick charge. So in about two to three hours, you can get a full charge in the battery and that's pretty speedy uh, to get you back on the road. And oh, I almost forgot to talk about the kickstand on this bike. And I normally don't spend a lot of time talking about kickstands, but one good thing that the electric bike company does is that they move their kickstand to like the middle of the bike instead of having it towards the, uh, the rear wheel. And this just allows the kickstand to be a little bit more stable in my opinion, and it supports more of the weight of the bike um, at a center location. Then also this kickstand is a wide kickstand. It also does have non-slip um, material on the bottom and stuff. So this allows me to put it on terrain like this with these uh, loose gravel all over the place. And the bike is pretty much rock solid as far as standing up. And so my only gripe about the placement of this kickstand is that with it being centrally located, sometimes the left pedal can, if it's in a down position, can be in the way so you can't put the kickstand down. So you have to move your bike forward or backwards a little bit to move that pedal out of the way. And so that's all the technical specs and things about this bike. But just for my riding experience, it's pretty positive with this bike. And that's because it's super comfortable. Look, I like the fact that this isn't the fastest bike that I have. It doesn't have the most range, but they get a lot of the basics done right. And with the seat and the handlebar setup, I can cruise around on this thing for a long time and feel very relaxed and enjoy what I'm taking in when I'm riding around. Um, and yeah, it does look a little bit more of that old school type of, of look. Um, it's not as super sleek and modern as some other electric bikes, but it gets the job done. And I think it does a really good balance of being able to have that performance. And then also to the, um, the really good pedal assist that allows me to pedal this bike and really not want to use the throttle. It's actually the opposite of how I am with other uh, electric bikes. And that rock solid pedal assist does allow me to get up hills and just inclines a lot easier than some of my other bikes. Um, because when you have this thing on level five, you can get up things without having to stand up and pedal um, or put a lot of effort into it. And also I do wish that this bike did come with fender standard so you wouldn't have like any splash from water and stuff when you're riding around. Yeah, I really wish we had some fenders on this thing by default. You see the bottom of the back of my bag got a little wet and also my seat is wet as well. It's a little bit wet out here in St. Louis today. But um, one thing about the fenders is that you can add that on as a customization option, but you will have to pay some more money. But besides that, this bike is pretty solid. And as far as the customization, as I talked about earlier, you have a lot more you can do on the website. So this is a single speed drive train, but you can get a seven speed on here if you want to pay some more money. And some other things that you can customize on this is changing the color of the rims. Um, you can also change the tire size. You can go with one that's smaller. And also you can upgrade the battery to get even more range. Uh, but yeah, those customization options on the website will cost you some more money, but you can check out their website website. I'll leave it linked down below. But yeah, this is wrapping up my review of this bike. It's a pretty solid bike here um, that I think that they have something that's going to be good for beginners or good for people who are looking for something that gets the basics nailed right. So all right, guys, I'm heading out of here. Leave your comment down below and let me know what you think about this bike and also this video. Make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get notified when I upload new videos. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.